Hello everyone and welcome down to the beautiful Grove and we've got a very special video for you here today. We've got a number of tour professionals including Ryder Cup at Tyrrell Hatton who are going to be putting on a clinic and a series of challenges. So sit back and enjoy. So that super high flop shot. Let's have a little bit of a look at how the pros are doing it and what you can learn. Now, a bit of a warning on this. This takes practice because it is such a finesse shot and the timing required is very, very high. But from a technical standpoint, the things that they were doing, there's absolutely no reason why you can't practice them. So a lot of this can be done within the setup. Now the loft on the club needs to be increased and therefore you're gonna to have to actually open up the club face. When you open up the club face, you are aiming it slightly off to the right. So that means you need to adapt your body to aim a little bit more off to the left. So that neutralizes the face. Eh? And then that ball position needs to be that little bit further forward in the stance. Now the reason it's going to be further forward in the stance is you don't want to be hitting down too much on the golf ball and this gets a little bit tricky and we'll explain why. So the ball position forward in the stance then you want to be putting a little bit of a weight forward because you want your angle of attack to be moving down but then when it reaches the ball you're going to be getting that club head passing the hands. What was that then? So you're going to be wanting that club head to be passing the hands as it comes through impact and this is why it's such a finesse shot because you're coming up quite steep with a wrist hinge you're coming down onto the ball and with that ball position forward but with that weight forward you're going to be passing underneath the ball and letting that club head pass the hands the timing required is so so fine that's why it takes that bit of practice the last little thing you can do just to make sure that that loft is maintained is as you take it back make sure that club face is pointing at you that means that club face is open and then make sure that club face is pointing at you Full face. Cool face is pointing at you on the way through. So that setup position, a little bit of a wider stance just so I can get quite low. Hands a little bit lower as well. Wrist hinge up, down, letting that club pass the hands. I think that'd have made that have maybe put me in fourth place from the pros yesterday. Take that. So hitting the ball super low. I mean, it's not very many times that you're gonna be needing to hit it actually that low, but there was a lot of good stuff that those guys were doing that you can learn from. So to really get that stinging shot, you need the ball position to be back, you need the hands to be forward, and you need the dynamic loft to be low. So what that means is the club needs to be coming in with those hands tilted forwards, the club moving down through the point of impact. So the amount of loft which is being presented is lower than you would normally see. That's gonna keep the launch very low. Now, a lot of this can be achieved with setup. So when you get set up normally, this is a two iron here, the ball position would be forward of center. This is 17 degrees, so just inside that left heel. But what I'm gonna do here is shuffle my feet forwards so that ball position is almost central. Remember, I'm gonna try and get this very, very low. And then what I'm gonna do 
I'm going to open up my body a little bit more because I want that club to be coming in slightly steeper than normal. Again, getting that angle of attack moving down through impact. Then I'm going to be putting my hands a long way ahead of the ball. I'm going to be trying to hit down and left and trying to keep this angle between my wrist and the club constant so I'm not moving the club and flipping. This is almost the opposite to the flop shot that they were hitting. So that setup position. I'm going to try and absolutely drill this one down. Keep my weight forward, keep my hands ahead at impact. And just try and hit that low little stinger. Best demonstration shot of the year. Basically, if you hit the ball 20 yards offline, that will be deduced from your score, deducted from your score, should I say, deduced. 25 points for the person who's the straightest. So you still have a chance. So, going first. John. Oh no. Oh, oh my goodness. Look at that. One? Oh. What? Oh. <laughs> One round. Just keeping the form going. Straight left. <laughs> oh, I feel it. So to hit that straight drive, this is something which <laughs> a lot of golfers want to do. And I'm not going to say that this is going to be an easy fix. I mean, to compare a tour pro trying to hit a straight drive to what you guys can do to hit a straight drive, because everyone's swings is so different, it's obviously a difficult thing to you know, give advice on. But the one thing that you saw with the tour pros when they were trying to hit it straighter, their overall swing speed and tempo, it was just honed slightly down. So this is the very simple swing thought that I want you guys to try and do. So get yourself set up into your normal driver position, ball position just inside that left heel. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it up to the top. And I want you to feel that from this point, as you move down to about this point in your swing, that speed is reduced to about 60%. Now that sounds quite dramatic. It sounds well, if I'm reducing at this point here in that transition period, how am I actually gonna get any distance at all? But give it a go. What you will generally find is that the transition of the swing, if you can slow this part down, you can actually get into good positions. From then on in, your actual swing speed can actually increase at times. It sounds slightly convoluted, it sounds slightly strange, but trust me on this, I've coached enough golfers to know that slowing down that transition phase in the swing can really give massive benefits. Getting that set up as normal with the driver, just inside that left heel, a little bit of spine tilt away. And then all we're gonna do on this in that transition phase is just try and slow it down to about 60%. Tell you what, these demo shots today, I'm talking it through. Definitely need to do this. So congratulations, Matthew Jordan, for winning that little clinic there. It was just great to spend some time with those tour pros for everyone there assembled to see such really good shots and to actually learn from them as well, especially with that flop shot to see that kind of up close. It just shows how good these guys really, really are. And thank you so, so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that too and learned something. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And please comment below on everything that you've seen in today's video. Big thank you to The Grove for having us down as well. Such a really, really good facility down here. Always enjoy it as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.